Thank you all so much. I have to admit to being touched and a little bit overwhelmed to see you all here. And Max, of course, thank you, President Nikias, for that glorious introduction. Um, I, there's no chance that I will ever do better than that again. So thank you for starting my career off here on the right foot. You have done so much to make USC a global leader and a center of scholarship and excellence, and more than that, an incredibly pl special place to teach and to learn. So thank you, Max. And Max, Max is, as he noted, uh, the first person that I met here at USC when, yes, I was at Moneyline, and it was the height of the tech boom, and I got sent um, to USC to report on a new academic center, exploring the intersection of media and technology. And there at its helm was um, Professor Max Nikias, Associate Dean of Engineering. And Max, I remember the story a little bit differently. <laughs> um, it, it, one area he, uh, Max and his team was studying were, it was immersive 3D audio. And to demonstrate what it was all about, Max brought me into this um, special theater where uh, sensory deprivation would amplify, apparently, the experience of the sound. All right, I thought I'm an intrepid reporter, why not? When we got inside, it was so dark that I couldn't see my hand in front of my face, and I panicked. My heart pounding, all I wanted to do was to run to the other end of the room and pound on the door to be let out. Only the greater fear of all the brilliant engineers standing on the other side of that door kept me in my seat. And then the 3D sound washed over me like a wave. And you were right. It was amazing. And so, you know, some journalists have these terrifying stories of war zones. I, <laughs> yep, the very scary media lab at Viterbi. <laughs> Dean Yortzos, I am sure it's not that way anymore. Max, who could have imagined that, that we'd be sharing this day way back then, and we'd be sharing a love of this great university? And who could have imagined that over these past two decades, new technologies would so fundamentally remake our world in ways that even you and your team of those brilliant engineers would have envisioned? Who could have imagined that communication, both the fields and its discipline, would be at the heart of our culture, commerce, and yes, politics like never before? and that they would create such profound opportunity and such extraordinary disruption. Who could have imagined that those changes would threaten the core values of our society? That the freedom of the press and responsibility of journalists to inform the public and hold our leaders accountable would be under siege? And who could have imagined a time when change is happening faster or more relentlessly than it is right now. Wireless communication has spread faster than any communication technology in history. It has been a potent source of fuel for the creation of new mass media, the frictionless sharing of online social networks, connecting billions in just a few years. We have unprecedented opportunities to connect, to communicate, and to access information Yet many of us feel less connected and less informed. This moment can feel as disorienting as sitting in your pitch black theater, as I did all those years ago. Our world has been rewired, and no one left us a user's manual. We may not have imagined that we'd be here, but this is a moment made for USC Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. This is the moment for us to lead the way forward. Our history has prepared us for this. Just consider the vision of our founder, Walter Annenberg, who said, the right to free communication carries with it responsibility to respect the dignity of others. And this must be recognized as irreversible. Educating students to effectively communicate this message and to be of service to all people is the enduring mission of this school. 
right there, embodied in Ambassador Annenberg's words, is our charge to use communication to understand the profound changes of our time. These words, too, remind us of the enduring values at the heart of USC Annenberg's work, a commitment to diversity and inclusion that is quite simply in our DNA. It's reflected in the breadth of perspectives and backgrounds among our faculty, staff, and students, and in all that we do academically and professionally. Thanks in large part to the vision of Wallace Annenberg, there is no place better equipped to take on this challenge. Our academic rigor puts USC at the very top of the world's communication schools. The excellence and energy of our faculty, our world-class facilities and technological capabilities are second to none. So too are our connections with our industries of practice. But to lead and navigate change, we need a new paradigm, one that borrows from the field of technology and from the spirit and energy of entrepreneurs, one that I used frequently managing growth in a new media startup. We need agility, fortunately already one of Annenberg's strengths. We need velocity to generate new ideas, test them, and if necessary, to change course faster than we're used to. We need discipline to abandon ideas that don't evolve as we'd planned, and the willingness to pivot with purpose and grace. All of this will create a dynamic stability, a comfort with continuous change that will help us lead the way into the future. We're beginning to put this new paradigm into practice. Velocity propelled the launch of our new BA in journalism. We need intellectually and ethically rigorous journalists now more than ever, and our program develops contemporary reporting skills, but also emphasizes the core values and ethics of the profession. With our Julie Chen, Leslie Moonves, and CBS Media Center, we've created an infrastructure to support innovation. It serves as a newsroom, a classroom, and an incubator for new ways of reaching audience. Scholarship and practice are both enriched by sharing the same physical and intellectual space. This new paradigm will drive three priorities in the years ahead. New foundations, new connections, and new conversations. By new foundations, I mean scholarship and teaching that help us understand today's dizzying change. One of the world's foremost communication scholars who just happens to be our very own Professor Manuel Castells, has observed that any new form of social organization and any process of technological change generate their own mythology, where there's a gap between social change and our understanding of it. We will invest in scholarship to address this gap, which frankly feels more like a chasm. To define the transformation of communication in the digital age, examining its effects and implications. And that begins by investing in our faculty, our most precious resource, and one on which Annenberg's reputation as the world's preeminent school for communication relies. Over the past few years, we've added faculty with digital media expertise across all of our professional programs. And now we are adding to our tenure ranks, with four new professors joining us this fall, and we will be adding more in the years to come. We'll also accelerate innovation in curriculum and teaching across all of our programs, communication, journalism, and public relations, using a continuous iterative process. I mentioned our new BA in journalism. Well, it's now time to reimagine our public relations program to fully address the transformation of the dynamic and growing PR industry and the global trends that are shaping its future, closer alignment with marketing, a focus on digital storytelling, and an ever-changing media mix. Every organization today not only has the capability, but the imperative to make its voice heard. And we need to prepare students for careers in a culture in which our stories and messages carry greater influence than ever before. To continue to attract and train the next generation of communication leaders, we'll also expedite the development of new and refreshed graduate programs, a process that's already underway. And we believe that media and news literacy is a core competency in the digital age. At a time when it's harder, as Max noted, to distinguish fact from fiction, 
and all too easy to ask Siri or recirculate a meme, we need to prepare our students to be savvy consumers and ethical producers of information. We've recently developed an interdisciplinary media news literacy class blending communications theory and journalism practice. It's soon to be a required course in all our undergraduate degree programs. But a fluency with new media tools and techniques, as important as that is, is only just a beginning. We'll develop courses to grapple with the ways in which new media technologies affect our ability to differentiate fake news from real, to understand the ways in which business models of our attention economy shape the design and intent of communication tools and platforms, and to appreciate what that means for users to appreciate what that means for all of us. My second priority as Dean will be to broaden and deepen our network of connections, to position ourselves along communication's new frontier. One critical area of focus will be to form and strengthen partnerships that help build the diverse, creative workforce our changing field needs. To do that, we'll increase our investment in career services and offer our students more opportunities for experiential learning. Our student services team is a hallmark of what we call the Annenberg Advantage, a highly skilled staff working closely with our academic units and leveraging the vast network of our relationships. Their work is part of the reason our students are sought after by employers. In our class of 2016, 98% of Annenberg undergrads and 99% of students who graduated with a master's degree were employed within 12 months of graduation. But as you might imagine, that list of employers looks very different from years past. Some of our grads are heading uh, for jobs at places like Apple, Facebook, Google, Netflix and many more want to follow their lead. Through a donor-funded pilot program called Annenberg Works, we're forging new connections with, global, with the global tech and new media communities. I'm pleased to announce this will become a permanent element of our career development capabilities. The team has established an ambitious goal of engaging with over 300 companies this academic year. 80 of those will be new relationships. We'll also work to create new connections for our students through immersive professional learning opportunities. We'll expand our two-week Maymaster program that Max mentioned, where our students experience firsthand the convergence and disruption in media, communication, and web technologies, and imagine their possible place in it. They listen in on the planning behind national ad campaigns. They talk with top level executives or early career professionals and bounce ideas off creative strategists. It is for many a transformative experience. Here's how Karen Moroquin, a first gen student whose parents migrated from Guatemala described our Silicon Valley trip. She said many families that come from humble beginnings don't have the expertise in venture capitalism and startup companies. When your parents are living paycheck to paycheck, they teach you about working harder than anyone else in the room. For two whole weeks, the walls that blocked my vision for the future became transparent and permeable. Experiences like this break down walls for our employers too, allowing them to learn from a generation that engages with content in entirely different ways. Our students ask well-informed questions sometimes probing a little more deeply than our hosts might expect, asking an Academy Award winning filmmaker, for example, why his much anticipated sequel was a box office disappointment. <laughs> yes, Dean Daly, that really happened. <laughs> or an executive at a professional sports league, why so few women work there. And sometimes they bring relevant academic theory to practice offering suggestions, for example, about how an entertainment company might reconsider its efforts to build parasocial relationships. Translation, create better fan engagement. I see time and again how an employer who engages with our students comes away energized, but also comes away challenged to think about her business in a whole new way. So I want more of our students and more of our employers to have these shared experiences. I want that spirit of shared learning to infuse all of our new partnerships. 
This pilot program will become a signature Annenberg experience and inspire new models for collaboration based on that kind of shared learning. We'll also create opportunity, opportunities for a new generation of students to challenge the way we think about our own business. The most diverse, technologically savvy, and technologically dependent generation we've ever seen, Gen Z, is heading for college. We need to understand them better. We want them to pursue communication, journalism, and PR as fields of study and possible careers. So we'll expand our pipeline programs for high school students, building upon the success of our Annenberg Youth Academy for media and civic engagement. Through this free summer program, students from neighboring schools learn about the importance of a free and fair press and the core skills and values of quality journalism. They also learn to use media to advance a meaningful purpose. We'll develop new opportunities too for high school students in sports media, media literacy, and advocacy communications. And finally, my third priority as Dean will be to expand Annenberg's presence in the public square to create new opportunities for conversation, dialogue, and debate. But I want us to do more than be part of the conversation. I want us to lead the conversation. For example, we're incredibly proud of the work of Professor Stacy Smith and her students on what she calls the inclusion crisis. Her research on women and minority representation in Hollywood has been a catalyst for much needed introspection. We're seeing Hollywood begin to address gender balance in front of and behind the camera in earnest. And I believe, and I know Stacy agrees with me, we will see real progress in the years ahead. Our contributions can ignite debate and accelerate positive change. USC Annenberg will invest in creating a portfolio of groundbreaking and newsmaking research to ground our public discourse in accurate, timely, and relevant data. We will amplify Annenberg's voice to increase our impact and engage policymakers, industry leaders, influencers, and in the general public in addressing the pressing issues of this new era of communication to keep journalism vibrant and valuable, to shape the future of PR, to provide guidance and counsel for those who make policy for the ubiquitous and unpredictable force of new mass media, to help technology companies grapple with the unintended consequences of their massive reach and influence, and encourage them to consider issues such as values, ethics, and intent. I want the world to know more about the work of our scholars. For example, we'll bring our expertise in cultural theory and criticism to examine issues of race, gender, and class as they shape contemporary communication. And we'll use that knowledge to guide the media industry and emerging platforms on issues of equity and inclusion. USC Annenberg must be at the center of all these discussions. And we have the perfect physical space to host them in the soaring forum of Wallace Annenberg Hall. So I invite you all to join us. As I take on the role of Dean at this moment of profound and often destabilizing change, Annenberg's mission has never been more urgent. I stand here at this new beginning, brimming with excitement, energy, and pride in this great school, its faculty, students, and staff. I stand here profoundly grateful. To President Nikias and the Board of Trustees, thank you for putting your faith in me. And Max, to you in particular for creating a USC where our lofty goals are encouraged. And yes, I know, we need to fund them ourselves. <laughs> and Provost Quick, thank you for your guidance and support and for being so willing to share your tremendous database of restaurants with great wine lists <laughs> for all those fundraising dinners I know are in my future. To my fellow deans, I'm looking forward to learning from you and collaborating with you. And a special welcome to the neighborhood to Dean Curry as he takes the helm of the School of Architecture tomorrow. To the USC Board of Counselors, thank you for your dedication to this great school and for the guidance I know you'll provide in the years ahead. To my colleagues in the faculty, along with my predecessors, former deans Cowan and Wilson, I promise to be your champion and partner I know I'm, I'm very confident that we will always agree on everything. <laughs> but if we don't, I will always have your back. 
And to our staff, thank you for your continued commitment to our excellence. And most of all, to our students for inspiring me, for inspiring us every day. I'm profoundly grateful to be sharing this day with my family, and thank you, Max, for introducing them. My mom, at the helm of the clan with her wisdom, dignity, and grace. My sons, Max and Will, when I discussed the possibility of coming to USC Annenberg with them a few years ago, they said, go for it, mom, and then asked if the job came with football tickets. <laughs> <laughs> they do, right? <laughs> yep, I took care of that. And to my husband, Bob Iger, who simply says, how can I help? I could not ask for anyone better by my side. And finally, thanks to two men who are not here, Walter Annenberg and my own father, Jean Bay, who Max mentioned. They worked together many, many decades ago. And I want to thank them for raising daughters to believe their paths had no limits. And I am quite sure never imagining their two daughters would cross paths in another century. Wallace Annenberg, I have saved thanking you for last. You are quite simply our hero. No, let me take that back. You are our shero. <laughs> you encourage us to be bold and daring, inclusive and inspiring, and you support us so generously as we do. I look forward to traveling this road with you. And I, I look forward to traveling this road with all of you. Thank you.